What is up, Warrior Rising family? I am Alyssa. I'm the director of marketing and media for Warrior Rising. And here we have the absolute privilege of talking to all the different voices that make Warrior Rising that stop you need to make in veteran entrepreneurship. And today we have the absolute privilege of sitting with Thomas Martin with Faith Defines Us. And he is here to talk about his experience and his business. And we're going to jump right into it. So Thomas, thank you so much for taking your time to come here and welcome. No, don't. Thank you guys for having me. This is so exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. So let's just go right into, so we just spent this time in Iowa with the cohort, meeting people, shaking hands, doing all the things. What, what was your experience when you were there? What were you expecting and what happened? You know, <laughs> I had no expectations because I love to be surprised, but it blew anything that I thought I might have out of my mind. I mean, it was so exciting. It was a hustle and a bustle, busy time, but it was so impactful. Mm -hmm. That was the best part about it. It didn't matter how busy you got. It was so impactful that every time you met somebody, whether it was a fellow uh, cohort or it was it, uh, you know, an investor or someone that just loved your business, it was the experience alone was well worth it. I love to hear that. And I'm sure everyone in Warrior Rising loves to hear it because I keep saying you got to experience it yourself. Like, don't just take our word for it, but it seriously is life changing. It's, an, it's, it's fun, too. 100%. I mean, like when you're in person versus like, like, I know that some people watch it online, but you know, being in person is just a unique thing. And, and being especially there as a contestant was definitely, uh, I ain't gonna lie, nerve wracking, yeah. but excitement <laughs> all in the same kind of thing. So you're like, is this nerves or is this excitement or both? Yeah, no, exactly. And I was fortunate enough, uh, and I made it a point to actually sit through all the pitches because anyone that attends these business showers don't get to see the pitch process. And obviously, because it'd be like the longest event ever, right? If we had all the pitches too, but I was very happy to be able to sit in on that. So I was able to hear more about your business. But for those who couldn't sit in during the pitch, explain to us the inspiration behind Faith Defines Us and what your mission is. Definitely. So Faith Defines Us is a Christian lifestyle brand. And the real inspiration is when I became a born again believer, I was looking for something that would represent Jesus and God. And every time I would find a shirt or a hoodie, it was made with the worst kind of material. The cotton was always scra kind mm -hmm. of scratchy, itchy. And then even if you threw it into a cold wash and wash it, it still would shrink. That's <laughs> when I discovered that all cotton is not created the same. And I wanted to create something that had a higher standard, you know. Something that, that you could wear multiple times, like it benefits me to have to sell someone a shirt that they can well wear many times versus, hey, I'm going to wear it and throw it into my drawer, never wear it again. So we were, yeah. our whole goal was to create something that had a higher standard, but also represent Jesus with the biblical verses. And the cool yeah. thing that we do is that every design we design in-house. So there's nothing that we buy from Etsy. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but for us, we design all our graphics in-house, which kind of gives us that unique feeling because it's something that no other company has that, I mean, there's only one of me. So, there's yeah. only, you know, so there's only, we're, we're the only company that has, that have the designs that we have. So that's kind of where it was kind of born from just the give mm -hmm. that better standard. We want to be the, it's going to sound kind of corny, but the Louis Vuitton of the Christian world, we don't want to just settle for the norm. We want to have that standard raised up a lot. The standard and making your mark in the in the community. So, I mean, that's another one is like, you, which you already answered is just how you set yourself apart from other Christian apparel. And I mean, it's not standard. It's custom, like completely custom. And I would, I would venture to say that even your mission and your values behind your business maybe are even a little bit more thoughtful. They are. Uh, our, our mission is revolves around how can we create a community centered around Christ? So it's not always about profit. And then I know this might sound crazy for a business, but it's more about how can we spread the word of, of, of the Bible? How can we spread the word of God to people, but also make it into a community where people feel loved, liked? There's so many times at events that we would actually have people come in for prayer or testimony. So we're not selling or our competitors would be selling, but people would come in here and share their stories. And there's no better way as a business for me to, have, to hear somebody's story or to hear somebody's testimony. So for us, it was always about creating something more unique, something that we want to transform how business is viewed. So we kind of have that community mindset. 
Yeah. So then share, now that you kind of touched on that, like share with us um, your most memorable experience with how your apparel has impacted someone's life. Wow. You, <laughs> there's so many stories that we get yeah. that are uh, on a daily basis. That's great. My best story is this uh, young woman. She bought a strength shirt, but she bought it for her mother. Her mother was going some, through some medical issues, but she bought it for her mother. And it helped her get through those things. And then she came back and she thanked us for it. But she bought one for herself so she can go and face the, the, the valley that she was going through. And that's yeah. kind of like almost all the stories that, that are related is that every single person who buys something is going through whatever it is, the giants they're facing, the valley they're going through. But that word that we have on our shirts, that word that they were looking for helps them get them through the day. And for me, it's mm -hmm. so hard to pick the best one because they're all so different, but they're all kind of almost the same. It's like, hey, I needed that word today. Thank you for letting me see that word today. And then it opens up to for prayer, opens up for that dialogue to talk about God. So I, I feel like they're all unique, but they're all the same, if that makes sense. Yeah, I love that. And it just makes me think of like my first tattoo ever was actually it's in Latin, but it's by faith alone. So I just think that's like so interesting because it's like words do have meaning, you know, so sometimes you just need to I used to just flip open um, the Bible sometimes to a random page, just lead me to something that I need to see, you know, so words mean things. And they have so I love that the stories have to do with like, just the apparel and what's what's on it is, you know, something that some people need to hear, like hear or see. So yeah, I mean it's such yeah. a simple message and you're so right. We do have the power of life and death in our tongues. Mm -hmm. Like we, we can bless somebody or we can curse somebody. So we're looking at, at more of trying to train people in the idea of, Hey, you know what? Stop looking at the glass half empty, empty, mm -hmm. look at it as half full. And then of course, you know, like you're saying, you open up the Bible, God is speaking to you and that verse is going to hit you when you most need it. I love that. And it's a, it's a beautiful message that you have. And it's, thank you. And it's different too, you know, cause apparel is such a large, um, I mean, what are you, what are you finding in the competitive scape? Not like, are you just, I, I know we're very much community over competition. However, like we, as a business, like that does matter to look at your competitive landscape, but are you, are you seeing outside of Christian apparel that is becoming a competition or what, what does that look like? There is a, uh... The best way to describe it is, for example, the word bless. People have been using that in the secular world, which is if you're if you're kind of like a, a new believer, you might see something that says bless and you want to buy it, but it has no correlation with the Bible. You know, so we're seeing competition in that aspect, but a lot more companies want to use. And, and and this is not Christian companies, but, you know, we'll just have a Bible verse or, or throw something on there without any thought or process on there. So competition wise, we're looking at big main stores to get into that. But the problem okay. again is the quality is still not good. Yeah, quality matters. And it's like people are it going does. to and, you, and you're going to have to pay for quality. But at the same time, like it's going to last and you don't have to throw it away in you know, a year when it doesn't fit or shrinks or fades. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Talk to us, obviously, with uh, being on a Warrior Rising channel, how, what role has Warrior Rising played in, to shape your entrepreneurial journey in this, in this business venture? You know, the best thing is, I'm going to start from the beginning, the, the yeah. academy really helps people understand the business plan. And as a veteran, using military terms really made it stick a lot more. So you have a more of an understanding, you're like, oh, now I get it versus the business world. So I, I really feel like the Academy gave me a great uh, leg to stand on, a great way to start something, or even re redefine what I was doing, making sure I was doing it right. But the whole experience, I mean, from the from the beginning to now has been ex excellent. Like, like, like they're, they go out of their way to help you. They go out of their way to make connections for you. They go out of their way to make sure that you're on the right path. They don't want no one to fail. And I think that's what we have to realize is that Warrior Rising is more than just, hey, training. It's more than, hey, you can win a grant. It's more about, hey, what can we do to make you succeed? And I've never met a, a, a nonprofit that cared about veterans and their business more than Warrior Rising. And I'm not just saying that because I just came from their event. I'm really saying that because there's many out there, but Warrior Rising has been the first that says, what can we do? to make you succeed what can we do to make you better how can we help you i love that i mean i love that 
Yeah, absolutely. And some people don't even know it exists. So I think having these stories is very beneficial. Sorry for my dog. <laughs> I have um, to see it. <laughs> it's like she's always there. But so let's say there is, um, you know, a veteran who's looking to be on, an entrepreneur, or maybe they already have a business idea, or they started something and they're stuck. What, what advice would you give to someone um, in that position right now who's considering Warrior Rising, or if you were to be talking to them, what, what, what would that advice be? I would tell them, and I've told people, start with Warrior Rising, their academy. It's self-paced. You have a better understanding. You get to understand the basics because, you know, especially veterans, we come out of, of the military. We might not understand what a business plan is, but we understand what a mission plan is. So I tell them, Warrior Rising, start with the academy, get to know people, and then attend the Zoom calls when you can, the free training that they actually have. Attend every single one that you can. Get that experience. Get that knowledge. Get that little bit of piece of advice that you may never have thought about before. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I always tell them, check it out. Like I've been like, even before the, uh, the gala, I wanted the people, I'm like, Hey, you guys have to check out warrior rising, whether they do it or not is really up to them. But I really encourage them among all the other nonprofits out there. I really am surprised that warrior rising not only does what they say, but they go above and beyond the call. Absolutely. And explain to someone too, like, you know, there's only 10, 10 people that made it to this, this piece to actually pitch and, you know, everyone essentially wins something. Um, yes. So explain that process because it is rigorous. You know, there, there is a selection process. There's tons of people, as you see, like from 2023, we helped over nine, 9,400 veterans and there's a ton of applicants. I mean, in thousands. Yeah. So explain that process for anyone who's listening in, who's like, how the heck do I do this? And how, how can I be one of the 10? Okay, the first thing you have to do is uh, definitely go to Warrior Academy, finish that up, and then you'll go to, I think, the eight weeks of training that they have. But this is even before you submit your application in. So when you submit it and have your business plan, give a three-minute pitch about what your business is about. And then, of course, from my perspective, pray <laughs> that you get picked because there's a lot of people that submit to mm -hmm. it. And everyone who attends is a winner. Even if you don't get picked, I still say if you're able to attend, a Warrior Rising event, go see how it's ran, see, see how, learn from it. I mean, I, I, that would be the best advice I would have is, is even if you don't get picked and 10 out of 500 people is, is still like a lot of people that's applying, but 10 people are blessed enough to go there. But if you don't get picked, still go because you'll learn a lot and you'll see a lot and you'll experience a lot and you'll make connections even before. So the next time they have it, so I think they do it four times a year. So, I yep. mean, there's four other chances that you're able to make it. And every time you'll learn something and you'll gain something and you'll be better than you were the day before. Absolutely. I completely agree. And so with, you know, business and being faith-based and business always has, you know, it, it can have its bad rap or people just, in, you know, it's all about income and it's all about, you know, that, that GP or whatever like that. Some, sometimes what I've seen in a lot of, the, at least in all the pitches that I saw, there was a lot of impact, not just income. It was very impact-based, very giving back, very, very coming from a very a much deeper place than just, I'm trying to make a dollar on something I'm good at, you know? So kind of explain to us, um, how, how do you balance faith and your business values at the same time? That's a very interesting question. Uh, <laughs> I try. <laughs> it, it, it's it's kind of a unique balance because we want to put faith before business, faith before yeah. profits. And in the business world, people look at me like I'm crazy. But I always tell God provides whether I sell 100 shoes or one shoe or zero shoes. I still have my rent to pay or my mortgage to pay. I still have my bills paid. There's nothing I have to worry about. That's the faith part comes in there, walking with faith. The business aspect, though, to balance the two, know that when you're selling something, that you have to have something of value. And sometimes it's, for example, we had a kid at our, uh, I'm pretty sure you heard this during the pitch, but a mother took her kid, her son, to one of the events that we were doing, and he only had 10 bucks. There were some things out there for 10 bucks, but he didn't want anything. He wanted one of our shirts, which, of course, is like 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. I felt led, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a hit on this, sell it to the kid. For 10 bucks, I never seen a kid more excited to run to the bathroom, put that shirt on, change it, and wear it. Now, that's why we do what we do. The business sense was like, why would you do that? 
but yeah. the community and the fate sent was like that was worth it whether this becomes a customer for life or whether i made an impact on this little kid's life that he can smile for six hours that was worth it so it's really a tricky way to balance the two but as long as you sell something of quality i think the sell will come in but you just got to remember especially with faith you got to be faith inspired you got to let that lead your steps and sometimes you might not see the win today but you'll see the win tomorrow yeah, it was very beautifully said. I really love that story too. So I'm like, I'm happy to hear it twice. But those who didn't hear it, that that I mean, it's a remarkable story. Yeah. Um, so with like that experience, what are you hoping anyone who puts your apparel on your shoes, your shirts, whatever it is, what are you hoping for them to feel or experience with your apparel? I want them to feel the presence of God. I want them to know that they're wearing the living word. To me, it, it that word, even though you might buy it for yourself, but it's for the world to see. You might go out shopping, you might be doing whatever, and someone's going to see that and says, wow, I needed to hear that from God today. I needed that word. That's our whole goal is to get people to be walking ambassadors of Christ. And in, when you're wearing something with our apparel on it, you know, yeah. it changes how you approach life because, you know, first of all, you have the living word of God on you, so you can't represent Jesus in a bad light. So it changes your whole outlook. So something that may have made you angry, like road rage, you might be wow, I got to check my flesh today. I got to walk with a different standard. So I'm looking at changing the world because if we start living the way that Jesus has, has taught us to live, the world will change dramatically. It's all about loving people for where they are and not agreeing with what their sins are, but to love people. And I think we've, we've lost that in today's world. We, we want to judge people instead of just mm -hmm. love people. And I really truly believe by loving people, you can bring them to God. By judging them, you push them away. So yeah. when you wear our stuff, I just want you to be reminded that you're the ambassador for Christ. Not for us, but the ambassador for God. You're walking around with the living word of God. So if you're doing something a little bit crazy, it's going to put God in a crazy light. You know, when you think about ambassadors, ambassadors from other countries, they, they're representing. So they have to be in the best light possible because that's how we view their country. Same way here. That's how we view the kingdom. Yeah, no, absolutely. I love that. And so what challenges then have you faced, whether it's in the, you know, the startup phase, or is it with the peril specifically? Is it with being faith based because of, you know, times are a little different right now? Where have you seen those challenges? The biggest challenge that I found is when the pandemic happened, it, it definitely changed our whole business model to start over basically again. But every person, and, and this is not a dog at anyone who owns a cricket machine, you know, print your own stuff on there, mm -hmm. but it made competition harder because a lot of people, a lot more people bought their images and their designs from Etsy, put that onto their shirts. And then it kind of, it made people think of Christians once again as that bad thing because vinyl will always wash off 15 washes. It's going to rub off, crack. It's going to look not good. <laughs> Yeah. And that, of course, reflects the whole industry, because if you buy that one time, how do you know that when you buy from a different company, will it be the same way? So that's the biggest challenge I found is trying to still change the people that are doing that to have a better sense of quality and a better way of doing it so we can all grow as one. But right now, those little um, people that do it for their friends or do it the really cheap way and make it some good sales affects the rest of us who are trying to change the industry because now we're competing against people that can charge a little bit less but their stuff is not going to last more than like two weeks 10 weeks or if that so that's the biggest challenge as, as a company for me that i found yeah everything's a diy type thing it these is days so it's very <laughs> difficult um so this is another interesting question that i like to ask a lot of entrepreneurs just because it's commonly asked everyone is work-life balance, right? What is work-life balance? I have a weird take on balance where I don't really truly think it exists in what you would think like 50, 50 and everything. So with like mental health, you're running a business, you are, you're faith-based, you have a family. Um, how do you maintain work-life balance or what does that mean to you? To me, that's the hardest thing because, yeah. <laughs> uh, we turned our basement into our whole workshop, our showroom. So it is literally when you work from home, it's a constant always on your mind. It is hard to separate. Like this is why I was trying to look for like a brick and mortar store. So you could have that separation 
right now there's no separation. Mm -hmm. so, so that work life balance is so tricky because at this point it's like, Oh, I have a moment to relax. Oh wait, did I do something for the company? Got to run downstairs. It, there's no separation. And I'm still trying to work on that. <laughs> yeah. And I think as a business owner, it's essential because if you don't have downtime, you're going to start hating something, whether that's your business, your spouse, your life. And so right now my downtime is to walk away. I take my dogs for like a two hour walk. I go to the gym. I try to separate myself as much away from my house because that's my business as yep. possible when I get the time to do it. And I enjoy every second I'm out instead of making it like, oh my gosh, I got to do errands. I love doing errands now because it gets me to have that separation of like, okay, this is Tommy and this is not Faith Defines Us. But working in-house definitely creates a challenge because how do you truly separate that when you know that, yeah. oh, I could just do this for five minutes, go downstairs, fix something for five minutes and go back upstairs. There's, it's, it's really hard, but I think if you can manage that, it's essential for your mental health, your physical health, and your uh, marital life. You got to have a balance. And sometimes it's learning how to do that balance. And it's always a learning progress. Like today might be different than tomorrow. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's, and it's always the longest, you know, type of thing because you have to think about it, right? It's like, I don't know, like <laughs> one day it's, one day it's, you know, 50%. The next day I might be operating at a 30. Like you don't know. Exactly. <laughs> and that's okay. That's why you have good partners and friends and things like yes. that, that you can lean on to, to, to cover, you know, that extra, you know, maybe 70 or whatever that you're not carrying that day. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you, can you give us a little bit of insight into the future of Faith Defines Us and what, you know, what projects are you working on or what are you looking to do in like the next five years? Just what's the future look like? Uh, the future for us is finishing our sneaker line because we're going to launch a sneaker awesome. line that's going to be competing against Nike. And we already have the next three designs ready fleshed out. I hand drew, drew all of them. Now we're just looking for manufacturing to start getting these things out there because that's a big goal that we want to have, but that's a big goal that we know we can see. And within five years, I'm looking to open a mobile store that it, when I do events, I can have this. I'm not sure if you've ever seen it. I, I, people have these big, awesome like, like, like trailers or UPS kind of trucks and they convert them into like boutiques. Same yeah. kind of concept that we want to have is that when we drive somewhere, we want to bring the boutique with us so people can have a better experience than coming to a tent. So we want to do that as well as I, another big goal is to open up a brick and mortar store awesome. and we want to be able to partner with local churches and be able to let them host like their Bible studies there. They need to have a worship night there. We want to make sure that it's more than just a business for us, a warehouse for us to sell our stuff out there. We want to make sure it's for the community that you mm -hmm. come there, you feel refreshed, you could do some shopping and best of all, you leave knowing the name of Jesus. So those are kind of the goals that we're looking for in the next five years. How that's going to happen, only Jesus knows. Yeah. <laughs> I love that though. It's, you're, you're cultivating that sense of community. It's not just, you know, yes, you can shop. Yes, you can have customers, but at the same time, I think fostering that community is the, the, the is the real big selling point too, um, where you can it's talk important. about Jesus. Yeah. I mean, if, if you don't do something for a community, you can't expect to grow. Like, you know, back in the day, you mm -hmm. see like the one person on, on the, on the hill, the biggest house, the rest of the people are suffering. You can't live like that. Like for us, we want to change that whole mentality. And even when we start having employees, I want to pay them a living wage. And that has nothing to do with minimum wage. Like, I don't know, back in the 60s, 1960s, when you see that, you always saw that one person that was the breadwinner. The other person stayed at home. But that breadwinner bought a house, townhouse, a condo, whatever it is. I want to do the same thing when we have employees. I don't need the biggest house because if my employees are suffering, what's that big house going to do? Be lonely. So I'd rather live mm -hmm. moderately comfortable and make sure that my employees are living better, you know, and that's the kind of standard I want businesses to have, especially the bigger businesses. You got to look at people over profits because profit will come. Just how many billions and millions do you really need while other, while your employees are suffering? So that's kind of our goal. We're, we want to incorporate that growth of the community because if community grows, your city grows, if your city grows, you grow. Absolutely. I love that message. And so I guess to wrap this up, which we really do appreciate your time, how can people, the audience, anyone best support your business, Faith Defines Us, and your mission? You know, anyone can go, and I recommend everyone go to faithdefinesus.com. If there's something out there that you love, 
purchase it because it, they, things do go out pretty quickly. So the best way to support us is follow us on all our social media. Just look up Faith Defines Us, and you can find all, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of them. But the best way to support us is to make a purchase. Say, if you really love something that we're doing or you love our mission, support us because that's the reason that we're still here because of our support. Awesome. Well, Thomas, thank you so much for coming on and talking to the audience. I know it's the not the last time that we're going to connect and hear from you. We will keep checking in because we're a family at Warrior Rising. Yes. So thank you Love so it. much for being here. <laughs> Absolutely. Your story is incredible. And I'm sure there's a million other questions I could ask. So I'm sure you'll be back around to talk to us again. Yes. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. And anyone listening, thank you for tuning in to the Voices of Warrior Rising. And if you are interested in becoming an entrepreneur yourself, you have an idea, you don't know where to start, you're in the exact right place that you're supposed to be. Maybe God brought you here. So <laughs> just visit our website, join Warrior Academy, ask any teammate or anyone who knows anything about Warrior Academy and Warrior Rising, and we will get you to the right place. Have the best time and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.